mighty pyramids, imposing statues, magnificent temples, the epic of the ancient Egyptians is undoubtedly one of the most exciting chapters in human history. With so many famous structures and artifacts that have managed to stand the test of time, one might think that we now have a fairly accurate picture of the ancient Egyptian era. But this is only partially true. In fact, in the course of their work, archaeologists repeatedly come across mysterious burial sites that simply cannot be explained exactly. One of the greatest burial mysteries of the Egyptians is that venerable resting place that bears the name KV-55. What sounds at first like just a boring description by scientists actually includes one of the biggest controversial issues among Egyptologists. Above all, it's one question that repeatedly gives rise to heated debates. Who was really laid to rest in KV-55? We'll now show you what the experts have to say on this exciting topic and which mysterious tombs have also been discovered in Egypt. Before we get started, be sure to hit that like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. KV-55 it's the beginning of 1907 when British Egyptologist Edward Ayrton discovers an ancient tomb in the legendary Valley of the Kings. After the team has informed their client, the lawyer Theodore Davis, about the sensational find, they immediately set about the task of removing the rubble blocking the way inside. It soon becomes clear. The tomb and the objects placed in it are in a catastrophic state. Apparently, water had already entered the crypt in ancient times, which is why it was apparently not expanded and only used for temporary burials. Instead of diligently documenting the millennia-old artifacts, the excavation team was anything but meticulous, so the men refrained from carrying out conservation measures or photographing every unique find. The excavation report prepared afterwards also proved to be extremely incomplete. Some discoveries were not described correctly or were mentioned in a completely wrong context. What we do know, however, is that the objects in KV-55 date back to the time of Amenhotep III until the fall of King Tutankhamun. One of the most important finds by far was, of course, the mummy. The mortal remains were in a gilded wooden sarcophagus. In addition, the researchers came across four so-called jars. Such vessels were used in ancient Egypt to bury the entrails removed during mummification separately from the corpse. In the case of KV-55, however, the objects were empty. However, the names of Akhenaten and his concubine Kia were immortalized on the canopic jars. The wooden shrine was in turn decorated with the names of Akhenaten, Kie, and Amenhotep III. But the name of the ancient Egyptian princess Sitamun was also found on some vessels. The fact that so many objects were associated with different people didn't make identifying the deceased any easier. According to some experts, the presence of so many objects indicates the burial was carried out in a great hurry. However, it's also conceivable that the deceased was originally buried somewhere else and only later reburied in KV-55. When the researchers opened the coffin, the mummy was already badly damaged. The few preserved fabrics and the linen bands were completely destroyed in the subsequent examination. Today, only a few bone fragments of the mummy exist. The central question that arose back then still causes heated debates to this day. Who is the buried person? The Mummy Mystery Davis initially assumed that these were the remains of Queen Tia. However, other experts later came to the conclusion that these must be the bones of a man who died around the age of 25. It was to be many decades before technological progress shed some more light on this historical darkness. A computed tomography performed in 2007 showed that the mummy is probably the famous ruler Akhenaten. 
The CT and DNA examinations carried out a few years later also supported this thesis. Accordingly, the results show that the buried was a son of Amenhotep III and was the father of Tutankhamun. The presumed age at death also agrees with the Akhenaten theory, but anyone who now believes that the controversy surrounding the identity of the mummy has come to an end is mistaken. Some experts complain that the determined age at death cannot be clearly proven. Another point of contention is the fact that the mummy of KV-55 cannot be the father of the mummy KV-21A. This is considered to be the possible mother of the stillborn children from Tutankhamun's tomb. A DNA analysis revealed that the dead man from KV-55 could not be the grandfather of the fetuses, although many other researchers agree that the mummy is actually Tutankhamun's father. The attribution as Akhenaten remains hotly debated. Some experts therefore believe that we're dealing here with Smekkare. This is commonly regarded as Akhenaten's successor. The problem, no other ruler of the 18th dynasty is so little known as Smenkakare. Due to the lack of evidence, it cannot be ruled out that it was Tutankhamun's father or brother. KV-21A as mentioned briefly above, the mummy KV-21A is most likely the mother of Tutankhamun's stillborn children. The great mystery that accompanies this finding lies in the fact that the very mummy could not be identified as Anksenamun. This was the sister and royal wife of Tutankhamun. In the tomb of the legendary pharaoh were some depictions that indicate that the sibling marriage was consensual and loving. However, it's uncertain whether this is an actual depiction of reality or an idealized variant. The two deceased fetuses, who were also buried in Tutankhamun's tomb, died in the fifth and eighth month of pregnancy, respectively. But who was the mother of these children, whose casket bears the scientific name KV-21A? When the corresponding tomb was discovered in 1817 by Giovanni Belzoni in the Valley of the Kings, it contained two female corpses. What KV-21A and B had in common was that both suffered from severe congenital deformities. Although both the skull and a lower leg of KV-21A were missing, the researchers were able to reconstruct that she measured around 1.62 meters when she was alive. However, who the woman was and where Anksenamun's tomb is located is still an unsolved mystery. Giant Black 30 tons and 2.65 meters long, when archaeologists came across a gigantic sarcophagus in Alexandria a few years ago, they were amazed. Due to the impressive size of the coffin, it's been suggested that it might contain the remains of an influential ruler, such as Alexander the Great. After the colossal black sarcophagus was opened, however, it was clear that three people had been laid to rest in it. Specifically, it was a young woman and two middle-aged men. One of the two men should quickly arouse the researcher's particular interest. His skull was adorned with a strikingly large hole. What was initially thought to be a warrior's injury turned out to be the result of an operation after a closer examination. Why the Egyptians carried out these so-called trepanations is difficult to answer. The holes may have been drilled in the skull to reduce intracranial pressure after a severe head injury. Animal Burials when we think of ancient Egyptian burial rituals, the first images that come to mind are elaborately prepared human mummies. What we sometimes forget, however, is that many animals considered sacred were also laid to rest in this way by the inhabitants of the pharaohs. These included crocodiles, bulls, falcons, and cats. When an ancient Egyptian animal owner died, their pets were often also killed, mummified, and buried with them. In this way, the friendship between between man and animals should be continued in the afterlife. In fact, mummified mice have been found alongside cat mummies. Some experts believe that the small rodents should serve as food for pet cats in the afterlife. KV-62 
At first glance, the simple designation KV-62 doesn't seem particularly spectacular. But in fact, the legendary tomb of Tutankhamun is hidden behind this term and the curse that supposedly weighs on it. After the last resting place of the famous ruler was found in the Valley of the Kings in 1922, its discoverer Howard Carter thought he'd reached the goal of his dreams. However, Carter and his team are said to have stumbled upon an ominous clay tablet when opening the tomb, on which was written, Death will come on swift wings to anyone who disturbs the rest of Pharaoh. Later, the mystical message is said to have been irretrievably lost. The inexplicable events set in motion after the opening of the tomb eventually fueled the legend of the Pharaoh's curse. Carter's canary is said to have been killed by a cobra on the day the grave was opened. According to ancient Egyptian belief, these poisonous snakes were considered the protectors of the pharaohs. When the financier of the excavations, Lord Carnarvon, died shortly after the discovery, power went out throughout Cairo. Two weeks before the Britons' death, an occultist is said to have warned him about the deadly wrath of the pharaoh. After a friend of Carnarvon visited the mystical tomb, he died of pneumonia a few days later. The literary scholar Guardian Lafleur was also no longer alive two days after his grave inspection. His two companions later committed suicide. In their farewell letters, they blamed the curse of the pharaoh. In fact, many more inexplicable deaths would occur in the years that followed, keeping the myth of the pharaoh's curse alive to this day. Nefertiti's Tomb King Tut's tomb is not the only one that's been clouded in mystery for thousands of years. As the wife of the pharaoh Akhenaten, Nefertiti is one of the most famous figures in ancient Egyptian history. Eventually, in the course of her life, the queen rose to become co-ruler and possibly had a central influence on the affairs of state. Nowadays, however, there's no trace of Nefertiti. Nobody knows where the grave is located in which the king's wife was buried more than 3,000 years ago. However, this doesn't apply to everyone. Archaeologist Nicholas Reeves actually believes that he's found a hot lead in this regard. According to the American, Nefertiti's tomb is in the legendary Valley of the Kings. Even more, the researchers have stood directly in front of the burial chamber without knowing it. According to this, the queen would rest in a hidden walled chamber in the same room where Tutankhamun's mummy was discovered. At least, that's what scans of the royal burial chamber suggest, which revealed some noticeable cracks in the wall. The future will show whether this is really the case. So far, many historians debate this theory and claim that the tomb of Nefertiti remains to be discovered. Though it seems as though more people are beginning to get on board with this idea that her tomb may be hiding in plain sight. If it turns out to be true, the rediscovery of her tomb may shed light on many ancient Egyptian mysteries. So far, the truth has yet to be unveiled. Deliberate curses, strange deaths, hidden doorways, and lost tombs. The history of ancient Egypt is filled with mystery and unexplained events that may never be fully understood. To the outside world, this is part of the lure that keeps us begging for more answers regarding this lost moment in history. But for Egyptologists and researchers, it's exactly this that causes them to lose so much sleep at night as they desperately try to piece together the missing fragments of this moment in time. As more mysteries continue to be unraveled, even more mysteries pop up that remain unexplained. Truthfully, it's becoming increasingly unlikely that we will ever truly piece together the forgotten history of this long-lost era. It seems that there may always be something else to solve when it comes to ancient Egypt. For example, what about the long-lost Hall of Records? Does this mysterious building still exist? And if so, what secrets could be hidden inside of it? 
It's long been theorized that an ancient Egyptian library filled with ancient Egyptian relics is buried somewhere in the ruins of ancient Egypt. But where could it possibly be? Also, what sorts of secrets and mysteries could the building help solve? Many people believe that, among other things, the Hall of Records may hold the answers to the Egyptian pyramids. After all, the Egyptians were known to write down virtually everything. So why is it that they have no written record of one of the greatest achievements of all time, the pyramids? Truthfully, there's a chance that the Hall of Records doesn't even exist. After all, the story is nothing more than a myth that has yet to be backed up by concrete evidence. However, researchers are hopeful that one day they may be able to put this mystery to rest and in turn help solve several other Egyptian mysteries as well. Time will tell. But for now, researchers will continue scratching their heads and digging for clues. All right, folks, now your opinion matters. What do you think of the ancient Egyptian tunes and their exciting background stories? Let us know your thoughts, suggestions, and feedback on today's video in the comments below. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to stay up to date from now on. Finally, please take a look at the other interesting posts on our channel, which we've linked for you here in the credits. Thank you for watching. Have a good one and see you next time.